You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another thought provoking, controversial, and show that is definitely going to get you riled up today. So I hope you're ready for some energy because uh, it's coming. And uh, my name is Paul. Wow, my name is Rob. I'm mean, curious how you're going to do that with this question. Uh, <laughs> Rile people up. I'm sure you have ways. Oh well, uh, well there, Rob. I've I've thought of some different uh, tracks and strategies in which I can get the blood pressure going. Well, I look forward to hearing those. <laughs> but thank you for joining us on this show. Uh, thank you for everyone who supports us uh, through being a member. Uh, we are mm-hmm. really excited. You know, we launched a lot of classes this year, and we're launching a lot of new classes. Kind of some are replacing some of the older ones that we had done, and even going deeper. Like the Don't Crash course is going to go even deeper. It's also going to add even more systems. And then later on, more and more companies have been coming uh, to us asking for provisions for a company-based kind of membership and more workflow and organizational stuff. So um, if you haven't checked out the new landing page when you become a member, check that out because that's just one of a hundred steps of change that we're making to the site. Uh, So make sure you check it out. And the trying drone you out for a dollar is going to be ending soon. It should be ending actually like any day, right? I don't know about any day, but we might, uh, I'd say the end of the year would be a definitive. Gotcha. Hasta la vista. Baby. So if you aren't a member, go ahead and sign up, droneu.education today. All right, Rob, let's go ahead and play this down and dirty question that's definitely going to... All right, here we go. Hi, guys. Love the pod. Thanks for everything that you're doing. I just got into droning recently, and your episodes have been a huge help so far. Hoping you can answer a question for me. So... I want to get some practice and I'd like to volunteer at a local marathon, taking some pictures and videos of runners and it would be unpaid obviously and pretty informal, but wondering a, if I should get, or if I need to get my FA 107 license and B, should I get some insurance or form an LLC at this point? Don't want to go overboard, but also want to stay above board on everything. All right. Thanks, guys, so much. Love the pod again. Bye. Thank you, Lauren. Really appreciate you reaching out with a question very, very much. Um, Solid questions and things that you definitely need to get figured out before moving into whatever you're going to do with drones, unless you're just going to go fly for fun at the park. But it sounds like you're thinking beyond that. So Advice for her. You know, Paul, one thing I'll mention really quickly is, is she asked about, uh, uh-oh, what? No, 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 go for it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, this is the inner Paul chuckling. Just go ahead. Go okay. The inner Paul. Get to know the inner Paul. Anyways, as it relates to an LLC, for what you're talking about at this point, that is not a definitive necessity, but if you're thinking about becoming a business of any sort, then I would suggest doing that. And why not do that sooner rather than later if that's your plan? So I'll just get that out of the way really quickly. Um, you don't need to do that to do the kind of thing that you're talking about. But if you're thinking bigger, then yeah, you probably want to get that done. Yes. Um, in addition, I would open up with this question um, of if you were doing this job without a 107 and you crashed, how do you expect the insurance company to pay out any claims? Which leads into, yes, you need to get insurance to do any of these kinds of things. Uh, yeah, that my next question would be, how do you expect to pay the claim without insurance? Yeah, can't. So, Unless first she's of all, independently wealthy. first off, I'm sure I, I can just hear people that I know listen to the show just being like, is this a serious question? And yes, it is a serious question because in today's day and age, people who are willing to ask questions are always not willing to do the deep diving research themselves. They're human. They want easy and convenient. So they ask people like us. And frankly, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that they ask the questions because it gives us an opportunity to correct these pilots and say, uh, this is not a buy a camera at Best Buy and go start using it 
scenario. Uh, this is airspace, and flying drones have serious consequences. And being ignorant about flying drones is going to have even more serious consequences, especially after the reauthorization bill that just went through. Now, that being said, let me just clarify this really, 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 really quickly. Anything that you do that is a furtherance of your business, you need a 107 certificate to fly and make money. If you do not have a Part 107 certificate and you are doing anything for the furtherance of your business and you were to fly and let's say you have insurance but not a 107, every insurance policy that I know of has in the uh, what is it called, has in the provisions that you must be flying in accordance with FAA guidelines, which means that if you are flying for the furtherance of a business and you do not have a Part 107 certificate, you're screwed, okay? I'm just going to throw that out there. So anything that's a furtherance of your business, if you're flying this event and you use it for a demo reel later on, that's a furtherance of your business because you're marketing your business. If you utilize any of this material to go pick up other clients and you don't post it, it's a furtherance of your business. And whether you want to admit or not, getting the Part 107 license is extremely easy. Frankly, it's too easy. There should be a practical test because, again, these companies and a lot of people are having problems vetting pilots who actually say they can do X but can't do Y. Okay? They can talk the talk, but they can't walk the walk. And any certification programs that don't actually have a way to vet that are going to fail. Anyway, long story short, what I love is that this lady is answering the question. Asking the question. Asking the question. Yes. Excuse me. What I, what I hate is that we all know that a lot of pilots are just going out there to Best Buy, which, whose drone section gets bigger and bigger, and they're buying these things, and they're just going out and flying them. What I'm grateful for are things like Aeroscope that are actually showcasing who these pilots are and what they're doing. What I would love to see is the FAA to actually utilize Aeroscope data to go after pilots who were flying in these negative areas. The And I, I go back to Balloon Fiesta example. How many pilots did the FAA actually contact who were known to be flying in the TFR for the Balloon Fiesta? Because DJ... There were quite a few of them. There are 42. So that being said, sorry, I, anyway, <laughs> Balloon Fiesta is close to the chest because it's one of those things that really upset me. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it just goes to show. Political. Nep it's so political and it's, nep and it's nepotism at its finest. And we're always trying to get New Mexico to grow. And it seems that at every opportunity that we have that, our government hires someone from outside of the state. And it's like, how do you expect the economy to grow when you send all of our money to foreign locations? Indeed. Anyway, sorry, that's why it's close to chess. Let's reel it back in, okay? Part 107, furtherance of a business, you need a Part 107 license. If you are a nonprofit and you're doing it for the furtherance of your nonprofit, it technically is a business, which means that you technically need a Part 107. Now look, with the adaptation of the Reauthorization Act, the hobbyist uh, trying to play dumb and say that they didn't know the rules is quickly coming to an end, as I believe that in the Reauthorization Act, the FAA did come out and say that they are going to be spending a significant amount of money trying to get the word out about operations. So yeah. I'm hoping that maybe they sponsor a few shows and that we can do some of that because I'd, I'd really love to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I would just say that if pilots are approaching this the way that Lauren is, um, I think that's a good thing, right? She's trying to figure it out. She's trying to understand. And yeah, could she dive into all the regulations and so forth? Sure, anybody could. But at the same time, that's why we're here. So glad that you reached out to us and asked us the question. Um, but the bottom line is it's going to serve you, even if it's a gray area, which I don't know, there are probably people listening that might argue that this is a gray area as far as the specific question that Lauren asked. But let's just say that that's true. Well, then I would suggest gray area equals get your 107, right? So that's there, not a reason to not get the 107. I mean, like, but prior to 2016, there were valid arguments for a gray area, and there were valid arguments to not use a triple three, like legitimate legal arguments. I right. mean, how many people did they go after who didn't have triple threes? None. Zero. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there really is no gray area anymore, and there's no excuse to be like, oh, well, I'm just, you know, flying my drone that I bought, and it's okay because I'm not hurting anyone. But they don't know you can't fly over people. They don't know that they're in controlled airspace. Um, in fact, I think there needs to be better test questions about airspace because people are now able to understand airspace and answer questions, but they don't know where they can and can't fly. So, well, and gosh, and talking to Ted about airspace, he he'll tell me I've been doing this thirty years, and I still 
there's still elements of airspace that I'm trying to figure out and learn. Yeah. Besides right. the fact that things are always changing. So you know, it's kind of like if you're an athlete, be a student of the game, right? Be a True. student of the game True. slash drone industry if that's what your passion is. True. But again, thanks for sending in the question. We do appreciate it. Uh, we, we appreciate the opportunity that you are a lifelong learner. We appreciate that you have an open mind. We appreciate that you have a willingness to correct any information that may be wrong. And for all the drone pilots listening to this today, be grateful as well. Because anyone who's asking you questions, who's willing to do the right thing, we need to support them 100%. And we need to help them out in any way possible. Here, here. Anyway, on that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 